Martin, I just want to finish off today by talking, of course, we must, about Liverpool Real Madrid tomorrow night in Paris. Good to hear Danny Murphy. Danny, thanks for joining us this lunchtime. When you look at it, remember that same fixture. The Champions League final, Liverpool Real Madrid, when Gareth Bale really turned it on with that overhead scissors Two game goals on the night, and yeah. that disastrous Loris Carrius performance that cost Liverpool so dearly. Uh, was that the fixture in 2018, do you think, that completely changed the trajectory of the Liverpool story and the Klopp story? No, no, I don't. I've, they've just been an upward curve all the way through. I mean, incredible where they, with the Europa League final, the. League Cup final, I think the first two finals was in. They lost that one as well. So that was three that he'd lost. I just think maybe this year he's had two trophies and I think a third one was in is within their grasp. Mm. I think Klopp needs to do that because when you're going to look back on this in years to come, everyone will see Man City four Premier Leagues from the last five and feel that, you know, what about where, where was this Liverpool team? And I think when you have trophies in and around that, yeah. you know, to have two Champions Leagues, okay, three finals. Yeah. Um, that redresses the argument but about Martin, how the, good they are. The reason I ask, after Kiev, things went in a different direction because that summer they signed Alisson. Everything cool. changed then. They then went on to win the Champions League against Spurs in 2019. And then in 2020, the, their first Premier League in 30 years, this season, the domestic cup double. Since then, that's a trajectory. Yeah, but the, it was the use of the Coutinho money. They got £142 million for, for Coutinho and didn't they spend it wisely? And it was a difficult call, and Klopp was didn't want to lose the player. But what he spent with that, what he did with that money, was absolutely outstanding. The players that they brought in, and they're still playing a major part in their successes. Mm. Simon, we look at this from a real Madrid perspective. Gareth Bale, what a story he is in himself. Mm -hmm. And I remember being at Luton Airport and the night he went. I'll never forget that. We're filming him for Sky as he disappeared off to Madrid. He's chasing a fifth Champions League winner's medal. Yep, sixteenth major trophy with Real. Yep. So how's he gone from serial winner to seemingly public enemy number one amongst some of the Madrid fans, many of whom are not having him? They're not. And you and I were in Madrid for that Champions League final uh, and had Phil Kitchamalides yeah. from Real Madrid yeah. that spoke to this subject specifically because we've had players that have gone to Real Madrid like McManaman that have been taken into the hearts of the Madrilanos, the natives of Madrid, and, and valued and felt that they immersed themselves in the culture, the language, the whole spirit and feeling of playing for this Los Blancos, this, you know, this unique football club. And for reasons that seem to evade me, he seems to be the, the absolute antithesis of that in the eyes of these Madrid fans. He has won them, four, unarguably. Four Champions, Champions Leagues. But he, he, certainly one of them. You know, you know, by his own achievements. Yeah. The, the other by being, the other, that? yeah, the other by being a part of a team. So but the fact that he just con seems to be routinely and systematically diminished by this this football club it's and a his real fans shame because is perplexing. But I also don't think he's helped player. himself. I don't think he's helped himself. I don't think you should be standing in front of flags saying Wales first, golf second, Madrid third, or whatever he did, and things of that nature. I, I think that he might look back on his career beyond the uh, the enormous monies that he's been able to generate and look at a period in his life where the financial rewards overtook the football returns because he's been out of sorts at Madrid for three years. Jonathan Barnett can wax lyrical about what he is and what he isn't, but he's been out of sorts for two or three years at Madrid and it was he was being touted to go to China at 28, 29 years of age, go to China you go to China for money, to not, not, not to yeah. play football. But, uh, well, but all, all, all ends tomorrow night, night, doesn't it? Jim, I feel there's an play, I, I keep saying this, and, I, I've, and maybe one day we'll get told the truth, but I just feel there's an underlying injury. There's a back injury that's been there for, I'm told, for the whole of his career at Real Madrid, which has got progressively worse. And at times it's there and it goes away. It, he's had a back injury just recently. That's the only first time we've really heard about that. Now you get all secondary issues with injuries. I know, Simon, we'll look at the, me standing out for a player. It might be that he just didn't want to play. I can't believe that. I refuse to believe that. I think Gareth Bale is a wonderful talent. What we saw him do for Wales in that recent international yeah. game, two it's amazing Austria. goals. I just feel maybe he's been denied the chance to play through injury. That can be the only reason. Or if you, but they've really I'm gone naive. against him. Maybe I'm I, mean, I mean, listen, I mean, he's a remarkable player, no doubt about it. And the talent is there for all of us to see and absolutely wax lyrical about it. But you look at Zidane and you look at the people who have gone against him and they don't just single people out because they, they've got a particular distaste for him. Yeah. They have taken him into a place they're not comfortable with. And you might be right. 
if you've got a back injury. But no, then, then you'd say something about it, wouldn't you? Sure. Rather than take this vilification. Well, injury or no injury, he's in amongst it, and it's for the last time tomorrow night. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, ten till one, on AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker. Talksport.